Hello, Rita McInerney here again. This week, considering it is Nolig Naman, or Little Christmas, I said I would discuss women in politics. Last year and the year before, I held events celebrating the women of Clare on Nolig Naman, and I had panels of guests of women who were involved in the arts, in culture, in uh, sport, in politics, in business, and they were great events to showcase the wonderful women that we have in the county and their achievements and their feats. And it was, they were great events. And unfortunately we cannot do that, that this year. So instead I thought I would discuss uh, women in politics. And our first female TD in Ireland was, of course, Countess Markovic, elected in 1918, which was also the year that women got the first uh, vote. And in the second all, she was joined by five further TDs. However, the numbers have fluctuated quite considerably over the years. And to the extent that a lot of work has been done in terms of addressing the issue of female representation in politics, because gender is the basic thing that divides us as human beings. And it is important that if our country is to be governed, if laws are to be made and if, if it is to reflect society and reflect um, the gender balance that we look to achieve 50-50 when it comes to political representation. And that's vitally important. Um, we did see a considerable jump between uh, 2011 and 2016 when the legislation came into being in relation to funding of political parties that they needed to have 30% of their candidates um, as female. And this was a significant um, achievement. And it isn't that there was female seats, uh, which does happen in some countries. It's just that there had to be women on the ticket to give people that choice. And then it was up to the candidates to prove themselves, which is how it should be. And in that year, we saw the uh, number increase to 22.5% in 2016. And again, in 2020, that number still stands at 22.5%. We have 36 of our 160 TDs are female. In the Shannon, the numbers are better, uh, 40%. We have 24 um, TDs out of, out of 60, so nearly 40% um, are female, which probably goes to show because of the way uh, senators are appointed or elected, that there is consideration given to given representation and to represent different aspects of society in different places that women are involved, whether it's community or the arts or particular um, areas of concern. Um, so that has been reflected in the Shannon, which, which is good. Um, however, it's still considerably below the European average, which is at 30 uh, percent. The Nordic countries are actually at 41 percent. And um, we rank 92nd in the world in terms of female representation in, in, uh, in Parliament. So a lot of research has been done in this area. And what's referred to typically is the five C's in terms of the impediments or the reasons why women aren't more involved in politics. The first one is cash. Typically, women earn less than men. That is a fact. It's for various reasons. And there's been a lot of debate over the gender pay gap. But women, therefore, don't have the same level of access to cash or resources, typically, that uh, that men may do. And it costs a lot to run a political campaign, whether you're in a party or not. Um, so therefore, cash is a huge consideration. The second thing is care. So this could be childcare, this could be uh, care for the elderly within a family that typically in society has uh, fallen on uh, the female members of the, fa of the family. So therefore, that is something of huge consideration for women when they're running for, polit for polit political office is to the care of their family members. So in countries like in the Nordic countries that have a higher representation of women, they also have 
very good childcare facilities. So that is a reflection of that um, and, and what has been achieved there. Um, the third thing is culture. And this is a reflection of society as, whole, as a whole. We do see some careers as typically male or typically female. And I suppose in that regard, politics has been seen as the realm of, of men. And I suppose we can all play a part in seeing uh, women entering politics as normal, as natural. We represent 50% of the population, as I said. So therefore, when we're being governed and decisions are being made and legislation is being drawn up, women's views and ideas and uh, uh, solutions must be included to reflect society better. So society itself can play that part in saying we want female representation. We want females in there making decisions because they can reflect those views and those realities um, on the ground. The fourth area is the area of conventions. Um, political parties membership is typically is more made up of male members. So therefore, when it comes to convention as to how candidates are selected, those that are voting, there's more men voting than women. So therefore, that's something that women can get involved in. If you join your political, a political party and you have a vote and you have a say, that's your way. So before you get to the ballot box at all, a decision is made at an earlier stage. A vote is taken typically at an earlier stage. So women need to be part of that voting process in order to make decisions for their candidates. And if they want female representation, they can make that decision at that stage to put that candidate forward as a representative of the party. The fifth one is confidence. And women suffer from things like imposter syndrome and lack of confidence. And that's something that really should be addressed. And there's been a lot of great campaigns, particularly in sport to things like, you know, if she can't see it, she can't be it. You know, that, you know, if you see women getting involved more in politics and sport um, that those coming behind the women, those women, the younger girls and women can see that as something that if they have an interest in it, it's something that they want to do and um, be involved with, that they can see it happening. And I suppose that kind of, you know, reflects in what we've seen, particularly this year and during the pandemic, female leaders have done extremely well in their party. So this is, leads to in their country. So this is why it's so important to have female representation in government and female leaders in politics, because they bring a different aspect of it. We don't want 90% women and 10% men. We want that balance so that all views are taken into consideration. All ideas are explored. All um, solutions are, are put forward and different approaches and different aspects and particularly in 2020 um, with the pandemic women leaders did very very well in terms of guiding their countries in nurturing their countries in in bringing them through difficult hard times and um, if you look at the leaders in in Taiwan in um, New Zealand in Scotland these female leaders um, would be seen to have re responded really well to this pandemic and, you know, the fear of people and, and the concern and, and, and such a varied uh, response required. And that has, has been seen as something that has been very, very positive. And in the US, we have seen a female vice president. Again, whether you agree or disagree with, with party politics, it's it's seeing women take positions of power. We've seen more people, particularly in the, in the parliament, lead lead uh, female leaders. And that's all very positive because we need that balance. We need to reflect our society and ensure that there's female representation and male representation when we're making decisions that and introducing legislation that impacts hugely on women. And it has been great to see 
in a lot of political de debate over the last couple of, we of weeks, when you reflect on 2020 and new TDs coming into the doll, they would see, see that a lot of the political commentators are talking about, uh, you know, new TDs and, and their impact. And typically it has been a lot of the new female TDs that have been brought to the fore in terms of saying that they've done really, really well in terms of how they've performed um, and impressed. And we can see that in our, um, in, you know, in our, in our TDs and our ministers and typically during um, the pandemic as well, you know, th there's a lot of different uh, ministries that have been brought out and we've seen a variety of uh, women in the cabinet as well. So that has been very, very positive. So women are proving themselves because it is all well and good to put up candidates and have female candidates, but they have to be elected and they have to perform. And that is that is very important and is only right. But they are proving themselves that they are performing really, really well. So therefore, more women should be given that opportunities because those five barriers um, are there, unfortunately. And I think we will be a better and a stronger um, country as a result of having more women um, in in the doll. And uh, that is, is very positive. So hopefully we will see more women um, in the doll because only 10 out of our 39 constituencies actually returned women uh, TDs. So, um, you know, while there's 30, 22.5 percent it is you know it reflects that so you know to have an area constituency represented by women is very important that, that those constituents have no choice as to um or, or no i suppose different perspective from a gender perspective um on um their issues so it is very important that we have more women in politics and we're heading in the right direction and hopefully we will see more of that as time goes on. And I hope you enjoyed listening to me in relation to women in politics. And I hope to see you next week. And I will discuss uh, another topic in relation to rural Ireland matters and political representation. Thank you.